Hello everyone, welcome back to another IB Chemistry video, SLHL 2025 spec. Today we are looking at ionic bonding. So let's get right into it, ionic bonding, ionic lattice structure. So let's define an ionic bond and let's see what exactly this is. So an ionic bond is formed thanks to the electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions within it. Because as we know, opposite charges will attract whilst like ones will repel. A nice example of an ionic bond or structure would be that of NaCl, where we have Na sodium as positive with Cl chlorine negative forming the ionic lattice NaCl. If we look at sodium here, it has one valence electron, meaning one electron in its outer shell. And to achieve stability, atoms like to have full outer shells. And the easiest way for sodium to achieve this would be by donating its valence electron to another atom, in this case chlorine, which has seven valence electrons, which will also allow it to have a full outer shell to achieve as much stability as possible. Now, obviously, this will create oppositely charged ions, as we see Na is positive, Cl is negative, leading to the creation of the ionic bond between Na and Cl. Now, cations are positively charged ions. In this case, it would be our sodium. And our chlorine would be an example of an anion our negatively charged ion in this bond. Now, a way to remember this is that our cations will give away electrons, whilst our anions take our electrons, making them negative. And now let's take a look at our polyatomic ion. You will have to know these both by name and formula. So here we have ammonium, hydroxide, nitrate, hydrogen carbonate, carbonate, sulfate, and finally phosphate. Now, next up, let's just look into lattice enthalpy and what this means. So, lattice enthalpy as we see here in the specification, is used as a measure of the strength of the ionic bonds in different ionic lattices. But more specifically, it refers to the specific energy, so E, that is required to form a gaseous ion from one mole of an ionic solid. So this means that the more energy that it takes to break the bonds within the lattice, the higher the lattice enthalpy is going to be. And a nice example of this would be the comparison in melting points between calcium oxide and sodium chloride. Now, calcium has two valence electrons, whilst oxygen has six. And this means that calcium will give its two valence electrons to oxygen, meaning that it is actually sharing more electrons than NaCl, which we saw earlier, only donates one electron to the other, resulting in more oppositely charged ions and therefore a stronger bond. Now a little exception that we will have to look at will be our transition metals 
When I say exception, I mean that transition metals can form ions which are not isoelectronic to noble gases, and this is because they can have partially filled d orbitals and oftentimes more than one ion you can form more than one ion with your transition metals now do not worry about memorizing the charges of specific ions from your elements because you will be given a specific periodic table with these in your chemistry data booklet in the exams. Next up, let's take a quick look at the properties of ionic bonds and structures. So first up, when they are molten, they conduct electricity. And this is because electrons are free to move around, meaning that they can easily conduct a current from one point to another. Next up, we have high melting and boiling points, showing us that these structures are quite stable and that these are hard solids. And consequently, these will have a low volatility, which is a tendency to vaporize. And this is because we have very strong forces of electrostatic attraction between our oppositely charged ions. Another property of these is that they tend to be quite brittle and let's just draw out a little diagram here so you have a positive negative positive negative each representing the charges of our different ions now as we see now we have positives and negatives next to each other but if we apply a force to say our top layer over here causing it to slide over to the right, now we have positive next to positive and negative next to negative, which means that we have repulsion because as we know, like charges repel, opposite charges will attract, meaning that this top layer will just come off as it repels that bottom layer over there, meaning that ionic structures are prone to chipping and breaking quite easily under forces. The final property that we will have to be looking at today is solubility. Solubility refers to the ability of a substance to dissolve in a liquid to form a solution. So in terms of our lattice enthalpy, what we need to know specifically is that a low lattice enthalpy in comparison to the enthalpy of the solution in which we want to dissolve it in will lead it to dissolve. So this means that for something to dissolve in a solution, it needs to have a relatively low lattice enthalpy in comparison to it, or else it will not dissolve and form a solution. Now that's all you need to know for 2.1. Hope that was helpful and hope you enjoyed.